So you click on this video because you want to be the best Genji in the world. Well, come to the right place. Today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the essential Genji tips and tricks, damage values, combos, how you should be playing Genji, and interactions with other heroes. If you guys learned something new or found this useful, please feel free to like, sub, and share with your friends. Comment down below if you guys want to see anything else. And before we get into today's video, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Let me tell you about this little game called Honkai Star Row, a free-to-play, multi-platform, space fantasy RPG by Hoyoverse, the creators of Genshin Impact, which is now being supported on the PS5 and can be played on PC and mobile, as well as data synced and enabled. Recently, they have released two new 5-star characters alongside their new 1.5 update, with one of them being Huo Huo, a new wind-type abundance character that can provide crazy amounts of sustain, buff her allies' damage, as well as heal. The other one being Argenti, a powerful physical-type erudition character that specializes in AoE attacks and does it quite elegantly. With the new characters in the update, you can get a chance to go on ghost-busting adventures with Gwynaifin and Huo Huo as well as try a new 4-star character named Hanya. Alongside Argenti, you'll be able to pull for fan-favorite Silverwolf, a member of the Stellaron Hunters. And right now, if you log in from the 10th of November to December 10th for 7 days, you can get not 1, not 2, but 10! Three star rail passes that you can use to get either Hobo or Argenti. Don't forget to use the link in my description and use my promo code to get 50 free Stellar Jades. So what are you waiting for? Join over 80 million players already playing Honkai Star Rail and let's get right back into the video. So the first thing I want to go over is the damage values. If you don't already know, Genji does 27 damage per shuriken and he can shoot it in either a straight line or a fan. Next thing is his dash. His dash can go through people and hit each one of them for 50 damage and it goes to around 15 meters. These 15 meters will be quite essential in playing Genji and it will be very helpful for a certain combo later in the video. His next ability is a deflect. Uh, his deflect lasts around two seconds and usually you wanna use this to get yourself out of sticky situations. You can even save your own teammates or even bait aggro from enemy players. Moving on to his Dragon Blade, his Dragon Blade lasts for 6 seconds and you can slash for 110 damage each. So if you've been watching the channel, you should know this, but if you haven't, the essential thing to playing Genji is fanning before anything you do. So that's going to be fan deflect, fan dash, or even blading. One thing I would like to mention before we get into the combos is if you see any enemy at this 2 bar mark, you really want to go for this dash because it's really important as Genji to get these dash resets so you can get in, secure kills, and get out safely. So first one is just going to be a fan dash melee. If you land only one, it should only do around 106 damage I believe. And then the next one is just going to be the left click version compared to the fan version. Um, so you can just do that in melee and the number should be appearing at the top of the screen now if you don't happen to have any shurikens at all um, something simple you can do is just a dash melee uh, and i'll just do a straight 80 damage now this is a really important thing especially when you get to the higher levels this is going to be where the 15 meter part comes in really important so i want you guys to really practice and visualize what 15 meters looks like should be around right here what you want to do is a dash fan and melee and if you do it really fast it'd look like this and to get that to come out as fast as possible you just want to hold the right click and the melee button at the exact same time while you're in the dash animation now in my old video i mentioned the fan melee combo um and that should do 192 i believe i should say don't get me wrong Melee is pretty important to Genji in securing uh, kills and at the end of every combo. It takes way more time to kill someone after a fan melee. As you can see right there, I am pressing and holding the fan, but it's taking a little while to come out. You can just do fan fan. And I'm just gonna show you this one impractical combo. So to explain it, normally when you fan melee, you can't dash afterwards until like a little while. But if you do a fan melee and wall climb, you're able to ignore the dash buffer and then just go for another fan melee. So it looks something like this. I'm gonna be real. I've never really landed that in an actual game since there's just way too many conditions to meet. And next I'm gonna go over the Dragon Blade. Um, so as we know, Dragon Blade does 110. So two swings does 220. 
And adding a slash in there will be 270. One thing to note about Blade is that when you pop Blade, you will get your dash back. So feel free to use your dash before you blade. And when it comes to your blade ending, you can cancel the sheathing animation by either wall climbing or dashing. Now you may be asking, well V Pizzy, if slash dash slash does more damage, why would I ever want to do slash slash? Well, I want to make sure that dash is available to you, honestly, um, in order to secure a kill or to get out of a situation. I say that because, believe it or not, slash dash slash takes the same amount of time as slash slash. If there's a 200 HP target that's getting no support at all, you can honestly just slash slash him and then move to the next target with that dash rather than potentially wasting it if they can outrun you, like if you're a soldier or a tracer. So I would say honestly, only, only slash dash slash if slash is if they're a bit chunkier and you're nanoed, or if you know for sure they have absolutely no mobility or any way to knock you back from securing that kill. One thing I do want to mention while blading is I notice a lot of lower elo genjis tend to forget about deflecting while they're blading. And honestly, it's a really, really important thing while blading in order to survive and secure kills as well. Because if you think about it, a lot of people and probably yourself get pretty intimidating when you see an angry Japanese dude coming at you with a sword. Do you want to shoot him? And so because of that, I tend to find a lot more people more willing to shoot my deflect because they don't want to get killed themselves and they're kind of in a panic mode. So just think about that. Uh, make sure to use your deflect while you're blading if you have it available to you. Um, and don't forget about it. I would like to mention with any damage boost on a nano boost, you can one shot to the body without landing a single headshot. With damage amp, blade now only needs a slash dash or a dash slash. Now I would like to mention even with a nano boost, you cannot slash dash a 250 HP target. And unfortunately, you cannot one shot someone even with two damage amps. But you're now able to slash dash a 250 HP target with both amps. One thing I notice a lot of new Genji players do is they tend to get excited with their blade and they dash past their target and then they end up falling off. One really simple trick that you can do for both blading and doing normal things is just dashing at their feet because you'll still get the damage of the dash and you're in distance to slash. Same thing with the shurikens. Even if you're not at 15 meters, you can just dash to their feet and look up really quickly and do a headshot or even a body shot. Now, if you're new to Genji, um, you should know that you cannot deflect beams, but Genji can deflect any projectiles and negate melee damage with a couple of exceptions, such as Sigma Rock, Doom Punch, any AOE attacks such as a Hammond Slam and a Winston Slam. Now you may be like, be pizzy, be pizzy. Isn't Mauga out? How does he work with Genji? Well, if you look a little back in my uploads, I've actually already done a video on the Genji interactions with Mauga and how he works with him. So if you haven't already, go check that out. Now, although you can't deflect things like a hook or Winston Primal swings, um, it can help you buy some time to get out and come back to your healers. So think about that. A couple of little notes in here. Uh, you can deflect Bastion's ult, but you have to stand directly in the middle of where it's landing and look up. Um, you can't look at him. You have to straight look up or else it will just land on your head. When it comes to deflecting cast high noon, uh, the moment when he says it's high noon, when he says high Around there, you want to start deflecting because that's when the red skull will appear. Going against Echo, like I mentioned, you can't deflect her beam. But one thing you should note is if she does duplicate and you use your dash to kill her duplicate, you will not get your dash back. So be aware of that. And while I mentioned you can deflect projectiles and abilities as well, things like Junkrat Concussion Mine, while can be deflected, players usually explode it before it hits your deflect, so you still take the full damage, so I wouldn't recommend it. But, a um, little thing that I tested, shout out to a viewer, but if you deflect Ash Dynamite and try to shoot it, you cannot detonate it yourself. I tried it, doesn't work. I wish it did. One thing to keep note is that things like Lucio Boop and Brig Bash do not care. And a little 
tip at going in the Genji 1v1 to not get blamed in the team chat. When Genji is deflecting, he cannot avoid the dash damage, like it will still go through. If the Genji starts deflecting first, you can shoot into his deflect and then you start deflecting immediately. And since he started first, his deflect will end first, which means all of those shurikens, if he chooses to stay there, he's going to eat all of them. And while not practical, you can deflect healing things such as the Ilari healing pylon, Life Weaver healing pedal thingy, and, and Baptiste healing grenades. And if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much. But before you guys head off into your own games, I want to go over the play style for any newer Genji players or beginners that are struggling to know what to do with all this info. Now, I'd say there's two things to keep in mind while playing Genji. Uh, one, either build Blade, or two, punishing out of position characters. But I have some clips here. Hopefully, you can get some tips from here. Now something I noticed when I did VOD reviewing back in my day is a lot of lower elo Genjis tend to just hold a choke on Genji, which is very not ideal personally because Genji doesn't really have that kind of damage to be doing that. I guess you can build Blade just spamming a choke if you have absolutely nothing better to do. You're able to go around the map and take advantage of a lot of high ground with your mobility. So in like in this clip, instead of holding the choke, I choose to go around and I look that and see that my junk rat hit a concussion mine on this soldier. So I'm assuming he's half health and I go for this dash. Now, let's say I miss that dash. I still have my deflect available and that should buy me enough time to go behind this cover and reset all of my abilities. So I don't have to worry about that. And I might instance I had my dash available. I got to do that for free. And then I noticed that my cast pinged um, that someone is going on the flank so instead of going straight forward where the cast can just kind of shoot me as i'm moving to him i choose to go over this roof like i said you cannot forget about genji's mobility and that you can go over and get a jump on people without them expecting it once again i'm able to play aggressive even though i'm alone over here i know i have my dash i know i have my deflect um so i'm just going to dash through the sigma and the soldier to get some quick alt charge and then from there on i'm just building some alt using my cover and taking advantage of my wall climb i'm able to take a good off angle from my team and i see this cast is all alone out of position with no heals so I go for him, secure the kill. I have my deflect up. I'm able to just deflect, go for the health pack. And I still have my dash if it really gets bad and I can dash back to my team. Now in the second clip, it's kind of more so about blading. In this day and age, blading is kind of hard on just with all the immortality, mobility. Honestly, you just gotta, you just gotta look for one person that has their pants down like a Sojourn used slide or an Ana used both of her cooldowns um, and just get the solo kill and get any other kills if you can with that. In this clip with my blade, what's going through my head in this clip is that I see this widow used her grapple and I call for a nano. And I could have went for the Mercy, but my eyes are locked on this Widow because I know she has absolutely nothing. And so I go for the Dash Slash. Conveniently in this situation, everybody is clumped up. So all I have to do is Slash Dash and it kills everyone on this team. And one thing a lot of Genji guides will tell you is that Dash should only be used to confirm kills. If you notice a lot of the higher level Genji players, they will use their Dash to not only get guaranteed damage, but get more alt charge. Now, obviously you don't want to use your dash in a stupid way, but the main thing here is you want to think about when you dash where your end point will be. And if you're in a safe position where you can back up into your team. In this clip, you can see that I'm about like 70% alt charge right now. Although I'm not getting kills with these dashes, dashing into like three people or something gave me about like 10% alt charge. After these eight seconds are up, look at that. I already have my dash again and I'm able to get a kill and I have a dash again. And then since I have this, this is a meaty dash right here. I get my alt and then I can just call for a nano and then we get our dash again. And then, you know, we just do our thing and then wipe the team. There's another I know nano blade clip from experience. No, you can't get even with nano blade. Sometimes you get shut down a lot, but something to not forget is that 
Your survival is very, very important. It is way better to keep yourself alive in these situations so that you can keep your presence as a threat to the enemy rather than them being relieved that, okay, this Genji is dead now. So it's like, instead of making this a 4v3, I have kept this a 5v3 to keep this advantage. And because of that, see, if I was greedy and tried to go for more kills with the Nano Blade, I would have made it a 4v4, and that's even a greater chance of losing this game since they rezzed the Ilari. But luckily, I was able to secure a kill on Ash somehow. But even if I didn't, I give us a bigger chance of winning this game. Those are just uh, quick things. If you guys want me to go more in depth on his playstyle, let me know. And also for any of my subscribers now that want me to do an updated Genji versus every hero, uh, let me know. But thank you guys for sticking around. Just remember, if you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new, please feel free to subscribe, like, comment, and share. I hope to see you guys in the near future. Take care of yourself, take care of each other. Peace and love, baby.